All right. So there are a few steps of doing deliverance. Okay, if you have a pen and paper, please write this down. Okay, this is very important. These are the four steps of doing deliverance. The first thing that you need to do is repentance and confession of sin. Okay, repentance and confession of sin. Because this is the legal doors to the demonic power and authority. Sin is a, what opens the door. Okay, so repentance and confession of sin close that door. All right, so uh, a simple prayer could be, Father, please forgive me for my, for example, hatred, bitterness, unresolved anger. Okay, or if it's sexual sin, then it could be, Father, forgive me for sharing my body with so and so. Okay, confess your sin. Or it could be uh, your occultic practices such as reading horoscopes, going to temples, worshipping idols, um, believing in feng shui, okay? Whatever legal doors that you have opened to the enemy, confess it, repent before the Father. Okay, then um, number two is forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness from the Lord, okay? And if you have, uh, uh, if somebody else had hurt you in the past, you need to forgive that person okay so first of all you ask for forgiveness from the lord and then if there's anybody that you need to release okay forgiveness to do that as well and then i'm uh, sorry the third step the third step will be renunciation okay renunciation renunciation is not a prayer to god okay renunciation once again i'll repeat it's not a prayer to god okay it is a declaration of freedom to the evil spirits involved okay basically you are saying i am i have nothing else to do with you okay i'm severing my relationship with you okay so this is basically what you are doing to the demonic power when you renounce something okay so basically you are releasing and breaking the legal agreement with the power of darkness that is why renunciation is important yeah so can you remember it so far repentance confession of sins forgiveness renunciation yeah and then the last thing uh, oh uh, a few more things about renunciation when you are renouncing something it should be spoken as a command to the enemy okay it shouldn't be a petition to god okay you are like i break the legal agreement with the power of darkness you are not asking god god please break uh, the legal agreement no you are the one who do it why because you are the one who who signed the contract with the enemy. You are the one who need to break that contract. Okay? Uh, pacts with Satan and inner vows. Okay, inner vows will be something like, I will never get married again, for example. Okay, I'll never have children. Okay, I'll never have happiness in my life. That is inner vows. Okay, maybe you've experienced like deep sadness or deep emotions at some point in your life and you made an inner vows. Okay, that need to be renounced. Yeah? That need to be renounced. So for those of you who don't like durian, you need to do a self-reflection. Maybe at some point in your life, you have made an inner vow. <laughs> just joking. Yeah, just joking. But uh, inner vows must be renounced so that the curses can be broken. Yeah? And the way that you do renunciation is like this. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirit of okay, blah, blah, blah. Okay? What and what. Okay? In the name of Jesus, I renounce, for example, if it's an inner vow, right? I renounce the vow that I made to never, never to, okay, what was your, what was your vow? Say it out, okay? Or I renounce the vow that I made always to, okay, what is, what is it? Okay? All right, then uh, the fourth, the fourth thing, the fourth step is to command the demons and the evil spirits to leave. Now, if you have followed the three steps earlier, right? You've repented from your sin, you've confessed your sin before the Lord, you have given forgive uh, you have released forgiveness you have renounced your sin and the legal agreement with the power of darkness then the enemy has no more legal uh, hold over you no more legal ground over you so then the last step becomes very easy it's just commanding the demons and the evil spirits to leave you okay with the power and authority available to you okay so uh you okay as the person who is delivering the demon oppressed or the demon possessed person can declare like this in the mighty name of Jesus, I break the power okay, of the spirit of. Okay, then mention the name of a spirit. Is it a spirit of lust? Is it a spirit of violence? Okay, spirit of addiction, whatever it is, you mention it. Over what is that person's name? 
okay, over um, Tom's name, okay, over Tom, you know, over Ellen, for example, yeah, whatever that person's name. So that when they are cast out, those spirits will not come back again. Okay, and then you can say, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of every curse over, okay, what is that person's name? Okay, from, okay, for example, the parents' critical words or rejection. Yeah, yes, yes, you have a question? Yeah, um, so I remember when I was going through um, deliverance sessions with Abby, we did this. Um, but will we, will we go again in the coach training? Yes. We we'll go over this again in the coach training. Uh huh. The same steps? Yeah, yeah, it's the same step. Okay. Yes. So basically, one through three is for the person who is being delivered to do, and then four is for yes. the. Yes. The coach. Yeah, you got it. But as the person who is leading them, you are leading them through these steps. Right. Okay, you are telling them, okay, you need to repent from this, you need to confess your sin. Or is there anybody that you need to forgive? Okay. And after finding out about the things that have gotten them into trouble in the first place, we need to help them to renounce that thing. And only after we've gone through this, then we command the spirits to go. Right. So there will be no more legal grounds for that uh, evil spirits to stay if you have done these three steps correctly. Yeah, great question, Jess. Any other uh, questions before we move on? I think when I was going through this with um, my participant, I maybe didn't do part um, number four so well. You didn't do number four so well? The command, the commanding of... Yeah. It was more like a cleansing, a cleansing prayer, not the commanding yeah. of the to leave. It's okay. We are all still learning, right? So it's okay. The more you do it, the better it's going to become. All right. So... um. After you have commanded the evil spirits to come out from that person, what do you do next? You can lay, lay hands on that person and ask Jesus to fill them with the Holy Spirit. Now, who can tell me why is this step important? After a, a demon-possessed person is set free, why do we pray for the Holy Spirit to immediately enter this person? So, second time, now we come back. Sorry? So the the if so the person don't have to be empty and prevent the the exactly. thing happening seven yes. times. Exactly. Yeah. So after you uh, you drive out the demons from a person, okay, have that person ask the Holy Spirit to fill him or her, okay, to fill up every space that was formerly occupied by the evil spirit. Yeah. We do not want to leave the house swept clean and empty. Remember what Jesus taught. He said, if the evil spirits, you know, after they've been cast out, they come back and found that the original owner of the house, okay, didn't fill the heart with uh, the Holy Spirit. They found that the house was swept clean and empty. They're going to bring seven more wicked evil spirits to come in. Yeah, so that is the reason why we want that person to be immediately filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so spend some time praying for that person for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, so uh, you, at, the, at the end of the day, you want your... Uh, the person, the patient, okay, the person who is oppressed by demons, to live with the love of Jesus and to rejoice in his strength, power, and joy. Okay? All right. Uh, you might want to take a screenshot of this. This is very important. Okay, so this is uh, sample prayers of deliverance. Okay, you might want to take a screenshot of this. Father, I confess. Okay, maybe somebody else uh, can help me to read this. Ellen, are you there? Yeah. Father, I confess that I have sinned against you by name of the sin, and I repent from the sin. Father, please forgive me for my hatred, bitterness, unresolved anger, reading horoscopes, going to temples, worshipping idols, sexual immorality, etc. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the first two points, yeah? Confession and uh, forgiveness. Okay, next. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the spirits of dash and dash. In the name of Jesus, I renounce the vow I made to never or always. Yep. 
So this and in the mighty name of Jesus, I break the power of the spirits off dash over the person's name so that when they are cast out, they will not come back. In the name of Jesus, I break the power of every curse over the person's name from name of that, that spirit. For example, parents, careless, critical words or rejection. Okay. Uh, did anybody take a screenshot? Maybe you can share it in the group, yeah? So everybody can uh, benefit from it as well. Okay, uh, any questions so far before we go on any further? Are you guys learning something? Is this helpful? Okay, good. Yes. Next thing will be to practice, yeah? We're going to go hunting for demon-possessed, demon-oppressed people. <laughs> Ghostbusters. <laughs> All right. Uh, some some tips. I'm going to end with this. When you're casting out demons, keep your eyes open at all times. Who can tell me why? For manifestations and also so they don't slit your throat. <laughs> okay, that's a good point. Yeah, you want to see uh, their body language and... Uh, yeah, keep your eyes open. Yeah, you do not know. Don't uh, expect the unexpected. Now, uh, that's what I, what I have to say. All right. Uh, take authority in the name of Jesus when you're casting out demons. Okay. Don't need to negotiate with them. Don't need to talk too much. Don't have a conversation with them. Yeah. So take authority in the name of Jesus. And then uh, you do not need to lay hands. Okay. Command with authority. Casting out demons. You do not need to ask the names of the demons. Okay? The name the demons may mock at you. Okay? Right, Ellen? <laughs> the demons may mock you, but do not stop commanding. Okay, that is their tactic. Okay? Keep commanding until the demons come out. Okay, what if you run out of time? Let's say you uh, it's getting late, you need to go somewhere. Okay, what, what do you do? Okay, and let's say there are many demons in the victim and it's not done yet. Okay, uh, you have to go somewhere, but you know that the demons have not fully been uh, cast out from that person. You can actually bind them for 24 hours and you can continue again. Hit the pause button. Yeah? So uh, the idea is that the demons are prevented from manifesting in 24 hours, but then be sure to return okay, after the 24 hours to complete your task. Okay, and then uh, depending upon the culture, there are some of the parts of the opposite sex that you may be safe to lay hands upon. Okay, for example, uh, the areas that are highlighted in pink. Okay, but always check with the pastors and church leaders in that area because cultures can be different by regions. Yeah, so what is acceptable in one culture might not be acceptable in another culture. Okay, finally, can I have Gaia to help me read this? Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the scheme of the devil. Amen. All right. So um, any comment, any feedback, anything to add on? Anybody would like to, um, you know, maybe share a related experience? Satya, I know Satya has a lot of experience with um, demon oppression and demon possessions. Do you want to share something, um, Satya? Go ahead. Share something. Yeah, anything you would like to add on? Like, I like how Nelson was saying, uh, our life is very important. Um, walking with the Lord is very important. The heart of repentance and humility is very important before uh, you know uh, make sure that your heart is right with god uh, that is uh, very much important before getting into authority um so uh, i mean before doing deliverance i mean the enemy knows us from inside out uh, so that's very important and we only go there because of jesus and because of the blood of jesus right uh, the other thing also before doing it make sure you cover your family members uh, in prayers, your friends, your people that you're trying to reach out to. Because what the enemy does is usually he will go and attack the people uh, 
that the people were close to us. I mean, I've seen many instances that when I don't pray and call my family members, I, I, I sense the attack is there. You know, they go and attack my father or my brother, actually. So the prayers is closing them by the blood of Jesus is very important. Uh, so from well, well, my experience, yes, the command is very, very important. Uh, you don't have to need to know the names and uh, just command them, you know. And it's just amazing how the Holy Spirit gives us the unctions, what spirit to call out. Uh, it's just that you go with open heart, open mind. I mean, usually I go with open heart, open mind, and the uh, Holy Spirit usually will give us the unction. Yeah. It's just amazing. You just see how powerful God is and uh, how much God wants to deliver his, his people, uh, the children. So it's always been amazing when I see uh, deliverance. Uh, even, even yesterday uh, in, in my cell group, my, my newest believer, she is getting so strong uh, in, in the Lord. Then yesterday, uh, she suddenly just fell, fall on flat. Uh, on mm -hmm. the road, suddenly, suddenly she just fell on flat yesterday on the road while she was walking. And, wow. and then we, we carried her back into our house. She was so heavy. She's like a thin lady, you know, uh, I think about 60 kilos, but it took five men to carry her, literally five men to carry her. Uh, so, and then we was praying. I just felt like literally the spirit is just because she's, she, she's so hungry for God, she wants to know more God. So the enemy is just stopping her, right? So, so and then God gave us, by just praying, she blacked out. She was blacked out for, the, the, for a solid 10, 15, 20 minutes, you know? So God gave us the unction. It was the, the serpent, the spirit of, uh, I mean, the serpent, you know, the, because she was Hindu be, before this. And then we will know, I, God asked me to, she was a lady, so I asked my mom to lay their hand on the stomach. So the spirit was there, the stomach, the stomach area, you know, right? So, so we prayed, she cast, and then she vomited. And after she woke up, she woke up, she's feeling so much better. So it happens when you less expect. Uh, it doesn't mean that people are drawing so much closer to God. They are free. Uh, so we always have to keep our eyes open. As ministers, we always have to be sure, you know, uh, praying for them and uh, seeing how the life is. Okay, so the problem was she was actually, her husband passed away recently and she was confessing uh, this, uh, I also want to go to be with my husband. So the spirit of that also was uh, chasing after her. So confession, so you can check the confession. Uh, so, so, I mean, these are things to keep our eyes open, you know, so the people that we're journeying with. So, so yeah, this was our yesterday experience for a lot. Yeah, after our cell group ended. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Satya, for sharing. Yeah. So once you know your power and authority, right, it, it's fun. Yeah? It's an adventure. There's nothing to be scared of. And, and, and the other part also, when a manifestation, manifestation happens, you can just command him to keep silent. Yeah. I bind you, you know. I mean, this is some, some, something that I say. In the name of Jesus, I ask you to leave without commenting or hurting the person right now. I mean, this is something that I use. So yep. because the enemy is so smart, he'll try to torment and hurt the person so that the person cannot focus. So I, I say it immediately. You know, I, I ask you to leave without tormenting and hurting the person right now. Like, you know, uh, so yeah. that's something that I, I mean, I learned. So Sometimes they'll purposely bang their head on the wall. Yeah, the wall, they throw themselves to the floor. And the other part is I, I also learned from LM ministry, like Nelson was saying, eye to eyes, it's very, very important. Don't ask them to close their eyes because when they close their eyes, some people, they go into manifestation. So if you ask them to keep the eyes open, you look into their eyes. They cannot see because they see Jesus. Yeah. Many times when I do, they say, I can't see your eyes. I can't see because I'm seeing Jesus. Uh, that's, um, that's, that's how they, because they know because God is inside of us. So ask them to keep their eyes open uh, so that they will not go into uh, manifestation or into trance. So these are the people as possessed these are the people being possessed so it's very important that's why both eyes being open is equally important right now uh, eye so staring contest eye staring yeah that's why you just, that's <laughs> it yeah that's very important make sure you stare each other's eyes <laughs> because they, the enemy will not allow them to open their eyes uh, yeah. so that's something that i still learned so yeah all right guys uh any questions any comments? 
what is the key point uh, key takeaway message you've learned from tonight i have a question um this was this was some years ago um this young man he told me that once upon a time he actually um injured himself he he would um cut himself and in talking to him i didn't sense anything but mm -hmm. then again i didn't go pray with him so my question is was the cutting himself a manifestation of something else or was it like a beginning of something that could have happened do you understand my question i'll oh, say again <laughs> um the cutting himself where where oh, self-injury self self-harm uh -huh. the self-harm yes uh, was it like a manifestation of something going on spiritually or was it or it could have been something so i was just i guess i was trying to figure out about the self-harm thing because he eventually stopped and i tried to ask him i was like what made you start and what made you stop and he couldn't answer me he's just like i don't know i don't know but he was a Christian. He came from a Christian family, yep. but he didn't know the open door. He didn't know what was going on. So I guess I was trying to find out what's your... But it could very well be the uh, influence by the demonic oppression, right? Okay. Because the demons will keep on whispering in your ear, do this, do that, right? And if you're under the influence, you may just listen to them. Okay. Uh, Stephen, you want to say something? So I have a question. I knew uh, there was this family in India. Uh, the father died. He committed suicide. Mm. And the children were all upset, teens, young adults. And one, one girl took a syringe, filled it up with ink, and made sort of her own kind of tattoo with that mm. uh, on her leg. Is that like kind of... If it's got so much to do with self-harm and grief with that, like I'm not saying tattoos would be, I don't think every single tattoo is necessarily evil, but would that be something that is definitely borderline or something to look into? Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've heard like seminars on tattoos before, like you know how um, whenever they perform like a demonic rituals, there will always be like some blood that is um. off in the rituals. So when you are doing tattoo, right, there is blood coming out. So it's kind of like a blood covenant that you are making the enemy as well. So very, it might very well be um, uh, demonization there. So I, I will, um, I would avoid, you know, tattoos at all costs. Mm. I don't think Christians should go for tattoo. Actually, in the Old yeah, Testament, there was a passage about tattoos. Yes, yeah. not supposed to mark yourself. Not supposed to mark you. Exactly. I think Stephen, to add on, I don't. I actually saw this. Actually, it was a movie that I saw about tattoos. Um, it was actually a, a Tamil movie, and apparently there are tattoo spas where they put the dead person's ashes, and then they tattoo into the ink. Yes, into the ink. And the Some people look at it as a memorial thing, as I, I want to be still connected to that person. But this story was really interesting because the, the person got the ink um, wrongly tattooed on someone else and that's where it actually disturbed this person over time. And then when she crawled back, <laughs> she realized that she was wrongly inked. It's a very interesting movie. What's it called? Game. You can even find it on Netflix in, in, in English as well. It's called Game? Game, yes. G-A-M-E. Yes. Okay. Thanks. You know, I wanted to share something that happened um, about one and a half years ago. Yeah. Uh, we used to work in yeah, yeah. tower. Can you yes. speak closer? It's very Can soft. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Okay. We used to work in G Tower, G Tower near KLCT. So we have heard a lot of stories that G Tower is haunted. You know, that's what I hear. But I never really, I'm a kind of person, I don't believe in this kind of thing. So there was a time that we used to work on a 4 a.m. shift. 4 a.m. and there's only be two of us, two girls used to work at 4 a.m. I wasn't worried of any demonic uh, attacks. <laughs> I was more worried of the human attack. 
But there was this one day. So we, this girl and I were both Christians. Okay. And she's more staunch. Compared to me, she's more staunch. You know, the moment she comes into the office, you know, because she's always so worried, she will put her praise in worship. So I will also be okay. You know, this girl is listening to songs. It's all right. Let it be. There was this one day we were sitting down and working. And suddenly she tells me, Gaia, can you hear? I said, no, why? What did you hear? No, I think I can hear somebody coming down the stairs. I said, it's impossible. The, the floor is closed. Um, you know, it's only us. So I, I, I was so sure it's not anything. I walked up the stairs and told her, no, no, there's nobody. La. The cleaner lady is all not here. And then she became very frightened. She became very frightened. The way she got frightened, I got scared. I was more afraid. Oh no, what's going to happen to her? And oh my God, there's nobody to help me. You know, like Satya said, if she faints, I can't even carry her. <laughs> so she got very frightened and she was so sure somebody was coming with a blanket behind her. But honestly, right, at that point of time, I was feeling anything. But she could feel the goosebumps. She's showing me her hand. But the way she panicked, right, the, the fear in me was not anything. The fear in me was panic of, you know, how to handle this girl? How am I going to calm her? We are supposed to be working, you know, four in the morning. I don't have anybody to help me. You know, how to keep her calm? So she actually literally pulled me out and we went down the stairs to the lobby. She I was actually a hotel downstairs. So there's a um, hotel lobby. If you go downstairs, there will be security guards and you know, a little bit people. So we both went and sat down there and she refused to go up. Until today, I don't know what happened, but everybody used to ask me, what was it that you saw there? I said, I don't know. I didn't see anything. But uh, of course, when that happened and she started behaving like that, the only thing I started doing, I started saying the Lord's Prayer over and over in my head. But I do not know how is it that she was able to see something, but I really couldn't see anything. I couldn't feel anything. But she was so sure she could feel Today, when I think about it, I, I probably would say, oh, it's probably a thought that she had in her mind because she already knew the place was not clean and uh, it possibly could come into her. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how is it that one can see and one can't. Any thoughts on that? One can see and one can't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I can't see, but then I have experiences, spiritual, uh, supernatural experiences before. Uh, I, uh, I don't know, man. I really have no answer. Why? Huh? <laughs> Gaya, who has the movie rights for this story? That was awesome. Who has the movie rights for this story? Which one? The one that I just said? The one that just Yeah, said. your story. <laughs> Film rights. It's amazing. You, you, you should it's, have been there. I was more than this anything catching us, but you know the way she described the figure behind us, it was a man with his hand holding with a blanket coming against us. And then she tried to, you know, the, the key lock, we couldn't open the key lock. Because I thought to myself, four o'clock in the morning already, I'm stressed out coming at four in the morning. And then this girl on top of it. And then she's pressing the key to hit the button. And then she says, no, Gaia, it's not open. I said, yeah, but because you calm down and you press your pin properly, it will open. You know? <laughs> and then suddenly after all the pressing, it came. Um, you know, I, I always thought about it. Until today, I always thought about it. What was it that she saw that I didn't? So it's, an, it's another part also, this is how the spirit works. Uh, the spirit works to bring fear into us. If there's any, uh, it's try to, uh, to intimidate us. Mm. So those, he can sense, you know, like, like how Nelson was saying, he, he knows two different types of people. Like, you know, it's only two. One is the like rope, one is not, like, you know. Uh, so he try to fear, push them into more fear, more fear. So eventually fear what happens, he can control you. Mm. He can indirectly open door for, for it, you know. So he knows who's fearful, who's not. Uh, uh, so I have, I've heard many stories, people who actually 
the enemy show themselves. Oh, actually, my, my cousin sister recently accepted Jesus, also like about a year now. Before this, she wasn't aware of all these things. When she became become follower of Jesus Christ, now all these things is she she she's feeling, she's seeing, she's having this uh, secret smell suddenly in a room. You know, all these things. Suddenly, she's having. Hey, what is this? What is this? So she straight away called me. I say, okay, now you're following Jesus Christ. What happened is. Uh, now the enemy wants to fear you. He wants you to fear him. He wants you to show that he's much more powerful than Jesus. But reality is not. He is not powerful. He's just trying to intimate you. Uh, so all you have to do is keep believing in Jesus, keep moving forward, and cast it on the name of Jesus. You know. Uh, so that. So this is another side of the enemy. You know. He, when he knows someone is fearful, he will try to make them even more fearful. You know. Or maybe the other part, Gaia, you're not. You wasn't afraid of it. Uh, I never. So, from a uh, from a very young girl, I don't believe in it. I I've already set my mind that these things don't exist. I don't know. Don't I, I could be wrong. I, I could be you know um, in denial, but I've set my mind that these kind of things don't exist. And also, why I I feel this way so that I don't open door to exploring it. Yeah, Gaya. Um, there's no doubt that actually the demonic powers do exist. Yeah. So um. I've, I've seen it often with my own eyes, so I know that they are there, right? But whatever it was that uh, you didn't see, it's a good thing that you didn't see it. <laughs> because people could see it because they have opened doors, right? Um, through any of the things that we have discussed earlier. They must have opened yeah. door that um, opened their third eye. Okay, yeah. That's why they can look, they can see into the spiritual realm. So I, I have friends like that. They cannot see angels, they can only see demonic powers like evil spirits and all that. But angels, they cannot see. Yeah, so um, if we are a believer and you have that ability, unless, you know, you are called into like a, a ministry of deliverance, we should actually close that third eye. Yeah, okay, Maria, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, we have six minutes left. I think uh, once we are done, we are done. Lah, huh? No need to continue another time. But uh, yeah, Stephen, you have something you want to share? I saw you lifting your, eye, your hands, uh, raising your hands just now. <laughs> The question also about uh, drugs, like I notice some people, like just to continue off of Gaia's question, some people seem to have, uh, you know, maybe a lot of fear or anxiety, or they see things, they hear things, and it's very clearly like spiritual experience. And then for other people, it's just nothing, you know? absolutely nothing. So, and since addiction was mentioned here, I just thought I'd like I'd ask, is it possible that only some people are being attacked uh, when, when there's, you know, drugs involved? Or is it that some people are just more sensitive or more fearful or whatever it is? Stephen, I think I missed out. Uh, were you asking a question? Yeah. So, so uh, I've seen uh, like when, with people taking drugs, right? Some people seem to have. I'm not talking about just a hallucination, but actual spiritual experiences with demons and so on. And uh, some people seem to have those, have them regularly, uh, scary experiences like that. And some people just never seem to get them at all. So is that because of the fear or is that because certain people are being targeted or like, because this is something I've noticed even like with friends here, like it seems to be the case where some people have extreme uh, and, and repeated experiences and then some people it's just, it's never happened at all. Okay, anybody would like to respond to that? Yanni, you want, you want to address that maybe? No. I don't know. Maybe Satya. Satya is, uh, is done a lot more. Yes, Satya, Satya. Uh, whatever it is, Stephen, I, I believe that it must be through an open door. You know, one of the things that we've uh, discussed about earlier. Yeah, so there must be a legal entry that the enemy come in. Because the way it works in the spiritual realm um, is you must have done something that gives the legal rights for the evil spirits to come in they cannot just barge in without your consent yeah so addiction unrepented sin all those things are legal entry door 
uh, for the enemy to come in. I think the other part also is, is like I say, the fear is there. If there's the fear is there, they can mean, uh, I mean, the enemy is so smart. He knows how to deal with us. Like hers and different type of people. So he can use many strategies to deal with people. If he knows that Satya is afraid of me being physically visible or, you know, uh, attacking me or, I mean, like this. So he, he will do that. He wants to continue keeping me in the fear, fear zone, you know. Uh, yeah. if, they, if he knows that uh, uh, Satya is, 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 I want to keep him addicted to games or pornography, okay, let me create those type of environment for him, you know, uh, so with all his access. So he, cre he works in so many ways, there's so many strategies. It's only because we have allowed it, you know, like how Nelson was saying, the open door is... Uh, so for me, I believe the stronger the enemy is trying to show himself or trying to, that means the stronger God is, wants the person to move towards him. You know, uh, God wants to deliver the person, walk in him. You know, these are people who have so much experience with the, uh, the spiritual world. These people, when come into Jesus, I mean, they will understand the strategy of the enemy. They, they are, they are, they'll be, they are, their prayers will be so specific. Their prayers, prayers will actually carry a lot of weight because they have experienced it firsthand, you know. Uh, I mean, I always seen it that way. Uh, so that is why, I mean, be before even starting a deliverance, I, this question I asked, what type of things do you be experiencing? Do you have any dreams, spiritual dreams before? Have you seen snakes in your dreams? Or have you seen certain uh, weird uh, animals in, in your dreams? Have you been, uh, you know, it's like any blood sacrifice in your dream? You know, these are things, initiations. All these things. Uh, I was asking for a friend, but, but yeah, no, I haven't had them. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But yeah, very. Yeah, so these are the things I ask. And then from there, you usually get a lot of answers, you know. Uh, so even moving, moving forward. So, Okay, guys, uh, I have like only one minute left for this uh, oh. free account. Do you guys want to continue or do you want to end it here? We can come back. We can, you can come back? Think, you want to come back a, for another? want to talk about this all right so um if we get cut off maybe we'll we'll continue for another 20 minutes yeah we can resign back. Like, need to drop off first i have something on sure catch you guys next week okay Bye, everyone all right all right why don't we just uh re-log in again for those of you who want to continue yeah if you have something on then that's fine okay all right